not only a car, but an iconic British symbol, loved by enthusiasts the world over. A revolutionary design renowned for its shape, speed and size. But its place of origin is anything but small. Today's Mini is built in a 21st century mega factory, one of the most automated on the planet. With three models already in production, the plant is about to introduce one more. A new two-seater sports car, the Mini Coupe. The Coupe is to be unveiled at the world-renowned Frankfurt Motor Show in just a few months' time. It's a huge challenge to meet this deadline, and there's no room for error. The Mini, one of the most recognizable cars in the world. Built for the metropolis, but equally at ease on the racetrack. One of Britain's best-selling automobiles, with over 7 million produced for the global market. Mini is built in Oxford, one of the oldest, most beautiful university cities in the world the quintessential heart of England, famed for its Gothic architecture and scholarly tradition. But there is nothing old school about Mini Plant Oxford. This mega factory is divided into three sub factories. Body in white, where the exterior shape is formed. Paint, where each car receives its individual color. And assembly, where all the components come together, producing this iconic car. A Mini rolls off the production line every 68 seconds. Each one is different, made to individual customer specifications. This is complex manufacturing of the highest order. No two vehicles are, are exactly the same in a sequence. I mean, we actually tried to calculate uh, how many different variants of uh, minis do, do we build along the line. And we've got up to over a billion variations because of body type, colors, the contrast grooves. But now a new challenge has been set to produce a brand new model, the Mini Coupe. Our goals when introducing it to the factory are to make sure that we can get it productionized um, without disrupting the series of Mini we build now. Everyone has to be prepared. It certainly can't jeopardize the entire factory because of model introduction. But with the Frankfurt Motor Show only a few months away, the pressure is on. The coupe must be in full production to be ready for its global debut. The marriage of Mini and Motorsports is nothing new. However, the coupe is their first two-seater sports car. Still a Mini, but with a new look. 
new windscreen angle, the roof line, new tailgate, the Viper stripes give it that really sporty feel. The roof was inspired actually by a baseball cap being worn uh, backwards. The John Cooper Works Coupe is powered by the 1.6 litre twin scroll turbocharged engine with an impressive acceleration kick of 0 to 97 kilometers per hour in just 6.1 seconds. It's now the, the highest performing car in terms of acceleration and top speed that Mini's got. It's sleek, lightweight, with an angled roof to lower the center of gravity and enhance speed. Highlighting the sporting credentials is the active rear spoiler that pops up at 80 km per hour and drops back sitting flush on the rear deck below 60 km per hour. I'd say it had the speed of a cheetah and the agility of a gazelle. This is a completely unique concept mini. First launched in 1959 by the British Motor Corporation, Mini was developed as a response to the austerity of the post-war years. But as it steered into the 60s, it became the car of choice for not only the average man, but celebrities alike. Mini came to embody the very spirit of the era. In 1994, this most classic of British cars came under the supervision of new owners, the German luxury car maker BMW. In 2001, 52 years after its first introduction, the Mini was reborn. Originally this factory was set up for 120,000 cars per year maximum and only a few years later, 2006-07, Manufacturing made already 240,000 cars per year, so simply doubling in a few years. Such is this success story that Plant Oxford is nearing production of its two millionth car. For the first time ever, many are building their newest model, the Coupe virtually, using cutting-edge computer-assisted design. Project manager Tom Fester is responsible for its integration into the factory. The virtual studio allows us to bring together all the computer drawings that the engineers have done. Uh, and we bring them together in the order which we actually assemble the car in reality. The virtual build is also essential for engineers to check that everything works. Well, we're in the virtual world. Is there any way we can model that? We have to model it, yeah. I think we'll get some parts locked up. Okay, yeah, so on this occasion, we'll have to, to make a model. Yeah. We'll have to, there's the limitations of what we can do. Yeah. But geometrically, it seems fine. The virtual studio was actually introduced because of the coupe, because we needed to be faster. It saves an incredible amount of time, so we can take months out of the program. As with all minis, the coupe's life begins in body in white. This is where the chassis is welded and fused together. High-tech robots assemble 425 individual body panels per car, applying up to 1,000 welds an hour, making body shell production almost 100% automated. This is 21st century state-of-the-art car manufacturing. After the reveal at the Frankfurt Motor Show, the coupe will go on sale to the public. To meet their projected demands, Plant Oxford will need to produce a coupe every seven minutes. With such a tight deadline, the body shop team hold regular meetings to ensure targets are met. Volume for yesterday was 73, as opposed to plan 85, and we have dropped a bit on the units per hour. A challenging day yesterday. We've got to rise up to 85 today. It's always a challenge to build the minis, to ensure that we get them right first time and to meet our volume requirements. Production leader Pete Allen is responsible for the building of the coupe. The 
coupe is a two-seater Mini, something that we haven't had previously. The underbody is similar to our other Mini because we do use the front end, the mid floor and the rear floor. But when the differences really start to appear is through the framing facility where we put the sides of the car on and where we put the roof on. And that's where it takes its major difference from our other Mini products. Pete Allen oversees the army of robots to reinvent this iconic brand. You can program them to put a set of spots in certain positions and they will continue to do that and those positions will be exact, they will be as they're programmed and they will be repeatable with no variation at all. The robots apply 4,000 spot welds to each body shell, ensuring a rigid structure. It's all about a joining technology. We take metal and we join that metal together and we manufacture a body shape out of it. Once the main frame of the coupe has been assembled, the next step is for a specialist auditor to spot check the welds on random cars. We're testing to make sure that the, the weld has welded through all materials and we're testing to make sure the weld is the required size. Since the introduction of the coupe, we've been given a new inspection tool called Tessonics RSWA. The kit works by passing sound waves through the metal, sending the wave back to the probe. It calculates the distance in which the sound has travelled. The probe and the software then converts that into an image that we can see on the screen. This process is essential to assess the calibre and integrity of each weld. This is measured 6.2 millimetres, so we're well over our specification, which is good. During production, randomly spot-checked coupes are pulled off the line and these unlucky ones are sent to the dreaded destruction test. What we're doing here is, on the coupe, we're um, checking the weld integrity by opening up the panels with the hydraulic tools. The destruction team literally take the selected cars apart to assess the strength and quality of their frames. got a weld slug there of 6.85 millimetres so I know that my weld is way within spec um, which is good. This dismantled coupe will be recycled to start its journey again. Any car failing to meet Mini standards won't make it to the customer but a lucky few are given one last chance to shine. Tucked away in a small pocket of this mega factory is the home of OX4 Racing. In their downtime, enthusiastic workers convert the rejected minis into high-powered track cars that they race in the mini challenge. They'll go up against clubs, other factories and some private racing teams. The team's actually been here for over 10 years. Um, we started racing the Mini Challenge in 2001. It's been a, a part of the plant um, for many, many years. The season is drawing to a close, with one of the last races just a few days away. The championship is still up for grabs. This is the final build stage for the car um, before the race, so we're just putting it back together after a, uh, after a bit of a rebuild from the last round. Uh, we've replaced a lot of new panels on it, so we're just putting the final finishing touches on it before the weekend. In just a few days' time, it'll be off to the race in Anglesey, Wales. With the coupe's frame build, it joins the rest of the models on the body in white assembly line, where the doors, bonnet and boot are added.
cars then head to a mezzanine floor to position them for one final step, a strict quality control evaluation. Each and every car must be inspected from top to bottom by human hand. This is no job for robots. The biggest challenge we have is minor blemishes in the outer surface. Primarily that's the things we're looking to put right. Under the watchful eye of line manager Ron Henderson, every car is scrutinised. Is it cracked on the back? It's cracked on the back. We've got to find that, clear it, and at the same time, address it back to the area it's come from and saying we're finding this, what can you do to prevent that from occurring? It's right on the edge, you see. It needs to be moved in a couple of mils. Yeah. It's giving it that little spur there. Any problems with any model must be rectified immediately, otherwise factory production could be disrupted, affecting the coupe's looming deadline. Hey, we've got a, a, a weld spur on a spot. It's a bit close to the edge by the VC post on the right-hand side. I need you just to come and have a look. It might mean you have to just move this particular spot on the robot because some of the spurs are quite bad. It's not a rework line, it's a final line. So obviously it's to find fault, address them back so that they can then identify them and put them right. Ron Henderson has a passion for the Mini that runs through the whole factory. The Mini's a cult car. You can be anybody, turn up anywhere in a Mini, and it doesn't matter what you are. You could be a working class man, or you could be a very rich man. It's a classless vehicle. With Ron's approval, a batch of coupes pass inspection. The next step is the paint shop. Housed in a building over 60,000 cubic meters in size, each car will travel 10 kilometers on conveyor belts before its makeover is complete. Tom Bennett is a veteran manager in paint. He's one of three generations to have passed through Plant Oxford's gates. Coming to work is my life. When I very first left school, I started spraying in some little backstreet garage. And I eventually come through to I come here three paint shops ago and I started off spraying on the line. But I love spraying, I love paint. Give me a spray gun and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. The wide variety of colour options add to the unique look of each Mini. There are 14 different colours to choose from, but surprisingly, the most popular one is white. We've got the four different roofs and we can mix and match those roofs. Any colour the customer wants, any roof, we can do it. Before each car receives its designated colour, it must first undergo a rigorous preparation and cleaning process. The pre-treatment is like a pampering spa for cars that includes chemical baths and rinse showers. This ensures each Mini is dirt-free, ready for its colour. Engineer Darren Green oversees the chemical baths process. Just checking the quality of the, uh, the phosphate coating here to see if there's any, uh, any dirt, any uh, problem with the crystal structure. But, uh, it's looking pretty good. It's very, very important just to check where we are, dirt levels and uh, oil, and any contamination on the cars to make sure they're as clean as possible, uh, ready for the eco dip. The next step is sealing. Every hole and every joint must be made watertight. Four tons of sealer are used per week. This is a highly skilled job that requires a dexterous hand. I'm just taking away this sealer here so I can join up the seams. 
just keeping it all neat and tidy because the customer sees these things. So it has to be pretty good, pretty neat. You know, just to make sure everything's in order. With a new model introduction, workers at the Oxford plant have to learn a new skill set to be able to adapt. They must learn quick, otherwise factory production is compromised. The coupe, when it first came down the production line, it was pretty difficult to adjust. But once you get into a rhythm, you get a flow, you get a few coming through, you know, you can adjust to them as and when they come down. I've been in this plant 10 years now, on this line, and I reckon I've done at least a couple of hundred thousand minutes, at least. Next, the undercarriage is sealed with a liquid plastic to protect it from stone chips and corrosive material, like road salt. Every hole has to be sealed, and sealed precisely. The cars are then left to cool for one hour before entering the very final stage of paint preparation, a dust down. Despite all the 21st century high tech, there's still nothing better for removing dirt and static than a good old fashioned feather duster. These feathers, from the ostrich, are able to attract small particles and keep hold of them, ensuring a perfect finish. The final step in the paint shop is the painting itself. Here a 21st century mega factory meets good old fashioned craftsmanship. The prescribed colour is applied using both robot and human operated paint guns. Each gun is pre-programmed. When a body shell arrives at the station, the correct colour of paint for that specific car will automatically come out. On the right hand side we've got the base coat and on the left hand side you've got the clear coat. The technology we use is called clear over base. That's quite simply, we put the clear coat on top of the base coat. Of course when a new model comes in, uh, then we have to then start reprogramming all our robots to make sure that the coupe is exactly the same standard as the other cars. It's project manager Tom Fester's job to oversee the smooth running of the coupe through the plant. With the Frankfurt Motor Show just around the corner, any teething problems must be addressed. Just uh, looking at the uh, contrast line on the uh, roof. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys getting on? The most difficult thing for the contrast roof is getting the symmetry side to side and having a completely flush straight line at the right distance from the roof. It's a difficult standard to maintain, challenge for you, but no choice, yeah. you've got to do it. We just need to make sure that uh, that standard's been maintained and that we don't have to repaint that line because then our right first time figures start to come down and our productivity starts to come down. Once the painting process is complete, a final oven bake ensures that the new coat is dry. Each car is scrutinised for the slightest imperfection. If found, they're marked and buffered out. A last polish and wax is applied, and the minis are ready for assembly. The painted cars now travel through a tunnel to the biggest production area within the Oxford plant.
There are five major stations. An army of highly trained workers split into two working crews. Each worker has an allocated task to perform within a 68 second deadline. It's here that these iconic cars come together. Ian Cummings has managed almost every assembly production line in the 43 years that he's worked at the Oxford plant. We effectively receive a painted body shell. Our job is to fit around about 2,000 parts to every mini. But it's not just the sheer volume of parts for all the different models that make the assembly floor here one of the most complex of any major car manufacturer in the world. The unique thing with the Mini brand is the individualization. The customer gets to specify as much as they want. In a gigantic sorting house situated next to assembly, 16,800 boxes of parts are delivered every week. The logistics team oversee this intricate system, ensuring that every part is married up to its designated car. The parts are received in bulk, then picked in sequence using an electronic scanning system that scans that part for that particular order in the correct sequence in the delivery pallet, and it's then presented to the associate track site. This essential step enables the production of 850 individual cars a day. We received 700 new part numbers for the launch of the uh, coupe model. And obviously if the right part isn't at the right place at the right time, the whole system will come to a stop. As each Mini hits the assembly line, the vehicle identification number is applied and the doors are removed and placed on a separate line. This enables easy access to the inside of the car. It's now that the guts of the car can be assembled. One and a half kilometers of electrical wiring is routed through the cabin, boot and engine areas. The job of rigging the electronics is physically demanding. You don't see any girls up there. All of it is hard, uh, especially if you've never done this kind of work yeah. before. Everyone's got a big part to play in building the car, and trying to bring that all together is really challenging in itself. It's teamwork that makes it unique. Everyone communicates, so it enables us to work like this, and at this speed as well. As model introduction of the coupe progresses, project manager Tom Fester ensures that all is running smoothly on the assembly floor. How are we finding the coupe? It's a lot better than it was to start with. Uh -huh. um, we're used to all the changes. Um, definitely finding it a lot easier, mm -hmm. especially as we're getting quite a few more down the production line. The biggest challenge for assembly associates is uh, being able to build the coupe to the right standard, the right first time, irrespective of shift, irrespective of workstation. So it needs to become the norm. Each Mini Coupe has nearly 700 trim options, allowing for 15 billion different combinations. And in true sports car fashion, no expense is spared on the interior. Just by sitting inside the car, um, statically, before you go anywhere, you begin to smile. The car just wraps itself around the driver. And, and as soon as you start to move, you, you realise um, you're in quite a nice machine. Mounted on the dashboard are two chrono Swiss clocks. One a standard timekeeper and the other a stopwatch for recording lap times.
all trim has to be hand fitted. Each job has a specific time frame to be completed in. Failing to meet this could jeopardize the entire production and ultimately the Frankfurt deadline. Fitting the trim is one of the hardest jobs in the factory. On this particular job, there's a three man job inside, so we, have, we do one in every three cars. So we have three minutes to do the inside to screw it all up and fix the it. You need to be the, the sort of person who doesn't give up easily, especially if you're when you're learning on a new job and you've got one minute to do that job. Some of them are maybe delicate with your fingers, you've got to be very fiddly, like this one's very fiddly with your fingers. If you hit it too hard, you break it, and it can hurt your hand when you're not used to it because you're using muscles you don't normally use. So you have to be willing to take, your body has to take some abuse, if you see what I mean. <laughs> As each car goes around the assembly line, its allocated engine is simultaneously being built. Mini produced seven different engine types. At its top end is the beast, the John Cooper Works. A 1.6-litre engine that produces an impressive 208 horsepower. Acceleration, the top speed is now the best we've got in the group. This John Cooper Works Coupe will go from 0 to 97 in just 6.1 seconds, with a top speed of 240 kilometres an hour. An engine needs to be built almost every minute and over 200 individual parts meticulously added by hand. The monster engines are placed on the assembly line using a giant claw assister. Each starts as a standard block, but as they journey through each workstation, they're adapted to the specifications of their designated car. One of the hardest aspects of any job in assembly is keeping within the 68 second tack time. This is harder still when you're new to the job. You only get a minute of job, you only hear the beeping noise, when you hear that noise there, you hear it once and then you hear it again, then the line moves. So you literally got a minute, so you have to be quite quick to keep up with it. One week in, Oliver Williams is an assembly line rookie. If you make faults in this place, they take it quite seriously, yeah. which is obviously understandable, you know. You've got to be very precise with what you're doing. The engine is now put onto a large sling and onto a pre-assembled front suspension frame. With the engine complete, it's ready for its new home. And its arrival is timed perfectly to be paired with its designated car at precisely the same moment. The engine marriage is done in a two-pronged attack. One robot, two humans. In a state-of-the-art factory, to build great cars, nothing beats the partnership of man and machine. Three hundred and eighty kilometers from Oxford, in Anglesey, Wales, the Mini Challenge is gearing up. The Mega Factories team are running through some last minute alterations. Just giving the car a full check over. 
to make sure everything's in order for the next race. We haven't got too long, so it's a bit of a bit of a rush to make sure everything's in the right state. Like building minis, the team takes this race very seriously. Yeah. Reputations are at stake. After a, you know some long late nights in the in the factory putting the car together, um, this is where it all culminates and uh, comes to, to the race weekend. And it's a, it's a lot of hard work. The teams come from all over the United Kingdom and comprise of mini employees, part dealers and enthusiasts. Competition is tough. One of the favourites to win this year's series is Team Accelerate, a privately owned race team. There's a lot of drivers out there this year that are dedicated and putting a lot of time and practice and money in, into the driving of the car and the practicing of the car. So obviously a lot of us now want to win it quite badly. We're all friends off track, which is great as well, but obviously on track there's no friends. Um, so the racing's close, you've got that rivalry between you and the championship's very close at this stage as well. So yeah, all to play for. These are the two used ones that we've carried over. Okay, they don't look much better than the new ones now, do they? No. <laughs> I mean, that one's actually had it on the outside, isn't it? Oh my Christ, good state, right? What have you been doing, Bristow? I really don't know. Gavin Bristow from the Quality and Engineering Department is today's driver. Yeah, before the start of the race, there's always a bit of a combination of, uh, of nerves and excitement. After 15 laps of the track, Gavin is heading the pack, when suddenly he spins out of control and drops back in the field. Luke Cordell from Team Accelerate takes the lead. Gavin is unable to move back up through the field. He finishes seventh. Race, but uh, not bit damage, but it's all good. Good battles in there, but uh, yeah, it didn't come over a brilliant result. But hey, that's great part of sport sometimes. Yeah, the Mini is such a great car to drive because it's such a well-built race car. Obviously, they come off the road as donor cars and they're, and they're stripped down to be made into a race car. Um, obviously, with the wet tyres and stuff like that, they give us great grip in the rain as well. So yeah, it's a great car to drive. The team head back to Oxford. Perhaps next year's new generation car, the Coupe will be in contention for the top spot. Mini has been owned by BMW since 1994. Since then it has become one of the world's leading cars. Under new owners, production of this iconic car is seemingly unstoppable and soon to reach a significant milestone. The two millionth car is about to roll off the production line. Such is the brand power of Mini that British Prime Minister David Cameron has come to mark the launch of this landmark car. Today is a very good day for Mini. We have just managed to build a two millionth engine. Then it goes over to scuff up to meet the body. Then it goes towards end the line once the car's finished built where David Cameron is waiting to drive the car off end the line. I just wanted to be with you today to celebrate the extraordinary success of your business here, but also of car manufacturing today in the UK to take that iconic British brand to give it this great modernization and then to produce version after version that has had such commercial success not just here but all over the world. Mini has always been part of British history. We've produced our two millionth Mini um, and, and the real focus is there. We're selling it, the market wants it. We're meeting the demands of what everybody's requirements are. The Mini Coupe is on the final leg of its journey through the assembly hall. Mini offer 30 different types of wheels. These are secured on with four heavy duty bolts. Next to go on are the doors, which each car hasn't seen since the beginning of assembly. 
and after fuel is added, the final step is to brand the car. They are now driven for the first time. Finally, a comprehensive set of tests are conducted before the coupes leave the factory. These are of paramount importance when introducing a new model. Every single coupe that we build will go through a rigorous road test program. If we find one rattle, uh, then we're not satisfied. To find any such squeaks or rattles, the cars are driven over specially constructed cobbled tracks. If found, the car is taken straight to the shaker rig. The shaker rig simulates every road condition in the world, allowing the team to move freely around the car, locating and diagnosing the noise. It's the job of Steve Taylor to locate any problems and relay the information back to the factory engineers. It sounds like we've got something from um, the suspension area, the chassis area, and we've got a knocking noise, so we're just trying to find out exactly where it is. Steve relies on a tried and tested piece of kit. The stethoscope microphone and it allows us to pinpoint noises. When we're actually in the vehicle, it tunes us right into where the area of the noise. And noises from the left down rear court, it does sound like the um, exhaust. The rest of the car is very good, very satisfying when you eventually get there and you find out what the issue is. With the final test complete, Plant Oxford is now in full production. Targets are being met. Coupes are beginning to roll off the line. Now, it's D-Day. Months of hard work are culminating at the world-famous Frankfurt Motor Show. The press have turned out in force as the coupe makes its debut. Now the coupe is complete, the design team can reflect on a job well done. The Mini Coupe is a really good example of the team behind the Mini, the brand. It will appeal to a person who in this day and age really wants a fantastically beautiful car that stands out in the crowd. When you see this car come down the street, you really have to, as a customer, identify with the statement of it and say, this is my dream car. From concept to reality, in less than two years, the coupe was designed on a computer screen, but born at the Mini Mega Factory. The coupes join the rest of the Mini family to start their new journey. They're driven onto the factory's own train and then shipped on to 90 countries around the world. I'm sure the public will adopt the coupe as uh, the, the next new Mini. For many of the team, the making of these iconic British cars is more than just a job. When people see the uh, coupe, will they say it's a Mini? Definitely. There are a number of iconic uh, style cues that shout Mini. I've got great pride in the car. You know, if you see one driving past, you can think, yes, I helped to make that car, or I helped to design it and develop it. I'm really, really proud when I see this car on the streets with uh, customers that have spent their own hard-earned cash. It certainly makes me content. Job well done. This now is the, the crown of Mini. I'm soon to retire after 43 years in the car industry and I couldn't be retiring on a bigger high than leaving this factory that will always be part of me. I've worked here for 43 years. Brand new Mega Factory takes you behind the scenes on production of the Boeing 747 tomorrow at 8. Stay tuned for the shocking story of Hitler's GI death camp. 
by the British Motor Corporation, Mini was developed as a response to the austerity of the post-war years. But as it steered into the 60s, it became the car of choice for not only the average man, but celebrities alike. Mini came to embody the very spirit of the era. In 1994, this most classic of British cars came under the supervision of new owners, the German luxury car maker BMW. In 2001, 52 years after its first introduction, the Mini was reborn. Originally this factory was set up for 120,000 cars per year maximum and only a few years later, 2006-07, Manufacturing made already 240,000 cars per year, so simply doubling in a few years. Such is this success story that Plant Oxford is nearing production of its two millionth car. For the first time ever, many are building their newest model, the Coupe, virtually, using cutting-edge computer-assisted design. Mini, one of the most recognizable cars in the world. Built for the metropolis, but equally at ease on the racetrack. One of Britain's best-selling automobiles, with over 7 million produced for the global market. Mini is built in Oxford, one of the oldest, most beautiful university cities in the world. The quintessential heart of England, famed for its Gothic architecture and scholarly tradition. But there is nothing old school about Mini Plant Oxford. This mega factory is divided into three sub-factories. Body in white, where the exterior shape is formed. Paint, where each car receives its individual color. And assembly. The marriage of Mini and Motorsports is nothing new. However, the Coupe is their first two-seater sports car. Still a Mini, but with a new look. The new windscreen angle, the roof line, the new tailgate, the Viper stripes give it that really sporty feel. The roof was inspired actually by a baseball cap being worn uh, backwards. The John Cooper Works Coupe is powered by the 1.6 litre twin scroll turbocharged engine with an impressive acceleration kick of 0 to 97 kilometres per hour in just 6.1 seconds. It's now the, the highest performing car in terms of acceleration and top speed that Mini's got. It's sleek, lightweight, with an angled roof to lower the center of gravity and enhance speed. Highlighting the sporting credentials is the active rear spoiler that pops up at 80 km per hour and drops back sitting flush on the rear deck below 60 km per hour. I'd say it had the speed of a cheetah and the agility of a gazelle. This is a completely unique concept mini. First launched in 1959, not only a car, but an iconic British symbol, loved by enthusiasts the world over. A revolutionary design renowned for its shape, speed and size. But its place of origin is anything but small. Today's Mini is built in a 21st century mega factory, 
one of the most automated on the planet. With three models already in production, the plant is about to introduce one more. A new two-seater sports car, the Mini Coupe. The Coupe is to be unveiled at the world-renowned Frankfurt Motor Show in just a few months' time. It's a huge challenge to meet this deadline, and there's no room for error. The Mli, where all the components come together, producing this iconic car. A Mini rolls off the production line every 68 seconds. Each one is different, made to individual customer specifications. This is complex manufacturing of the highest order. No two vehicles are exactly the same in a sequence. I mean, we actually tried to calculate uh, how many different variants of uh, Minis do, do we build along the line. And we got up to over a billion variations because of body type, colors, the contrast grooves. But now a new challenge has been set to produce a brand new model, the Mini Coupe. Our goals when introducing it to the factory are to make sure that we can get it productionized um, without disrupting the series of Mini we build now. Everyone has to be prepared. It certainly can't jeopardize the entire factory because of model introduction. But with the Frankfurt Motor Show only a few months away, the pressure is on. The coupe must be in full production to be ready for its global debut. <laughs> 